guys, how's it going? Welcome to the very first recap of 2024. It has been a heck of a start for us. A, a trying time. Yeah, it's been a really tough week, to be quite honest. Uh, you know, Benjamin was sick over Christmas. He kind of got sick Christmas Eve-ish. Yeah. And he just went downhill on Christmas Day, and the next day was tough, and then he bounced back. It was like a normal sickness, though. Yeah. It wasn't like a big deal. We weren't worried about it. No. It's just, it's too bad when you've got a kid that's sick on it Christmas. Is. But then Samantha either picked that up uh, or something different, and it escalated for her. And her kids don't get sick very often. No, they don't. And it just it grabbed hold this time. And Samantha started, you know, with a cold and a little cough, and then it escalated. So New Year's Day morning, we were in the ER with her because she was kind of labored breathing, and she has croup. They tested her for all kinds of different things. I was so worried it could be this, you know, or that, mm -hmm. and everything was negative. Um, and croup, I guess, is a fairly common thing. I've never, I mean, I've heard of it, but I've never been around a kid with it or heard kids try to they breathe with terrible. that oh my gosh the stress level uh, and it's taking her a while to come back from it I feel like this morning she's turned a corner yeah. and she's playful no fever uh, still coughing but just like you can see the light at the end of the tunnel because today is day six for her you know the only time I ever remember croup was on uh, Anna Green Gables remember yeah, that with like the mustard poultice that yeah. Anne put on Diana's little sister yeah yeah I thought about rewatching that part. Like, what do I need to? What do I need, <laughs> what to, do do I need to do? <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, I mean, all that said, Nature's Willow pain relieving <laughs> products, <laughs> right here. We have these on our website now, GardenAnswer.com. They have brand new design on their packaging. Yeah. I think the ones before were a little bit more like on the blue side. Yeah, uh, I think it was blue and maybe like tan, more tan color. Yeah, maybe I this is like tan and green. I don't. It's very clean. It's the same looking. stuff. It looks a little bit different yeah. though now. Uh, so pain relief patch, bath soak, pain relief cream, itch cream, that sort of thing. Uh, did I already mention 10% off on our website? So gardenanswer.com. Also, Felco's are back in stock. They were out of stock for quite a long time. Yeah. Shipping I think it was issues. just, a, you know, with Christmas and everything, yeah. we, we placed an order and it just took forever to get the stuff here. Yeah. Sat in Boise for a long time. We finally had to go pick it up. Yeah. Um, because, like, they just weren't delivering it. So... Anyway, Felcos are back in stock. All of that said, I think we should just jump right into the videos because we are trying to cobble together two weeks worth because we skipped a recap, I think, in mm -hmm. there, didn't we? New yeah, Year's Eve, yeah. Um, so the first video we're gonna answer questions from is the plant shopping day with Aaron. So Aaron and I went over to Boise. Can't remember what day that was. It was like the week prior to Christmas at this point, wasn't it? Yeah. Or was it right after? I can't even remember. My days are just when you have sick kids and like consecutively, mm -hmm. oh, everything just kind of feels like a fog. I need to climb out of <laughs> right now. Uh, but it was a really nice day. We ended up going to Far West. We yeah. went to Edwards. We went to, do you remember where else? We went and had lunch. It was a nice day. And then day. I think just Andrews. Yeah, and we ended up at Andrews. Yeah, yeah. my parents' garden center. Layden Smith said, at 616, you mentioned angel wings. Do you know if it can be grown from seed? Is it an annual? It is an annual for us here. It's a probably perennial in like a zone, I don't even know, 10, 11, whatever, nine, maybe nine. Um, I haven't seen seeds for it. I did do a quick Google search because I did read the first question just a minute ago. And um, I found one place that has angel wings, Senecio seeds, but I have no idea. I can't attest to the quality or even the store. So, I mean, if you root around, you might be able to find them. They're usually fairly expensive on the expensive side when you want to buy them. I have noticed that. They're beautiful. Jeannie said, how long can the hellebores stay inside? Can they be saved for outdoor planting at a later date? Yes, they can. Now, hellebores, we did move that centerpiece out that I made because, yeah, Aaron. It was stinky. So, some hellebores have a slight skunk smell. Yeah. And it wasn't overpowering. You no, know, it was kind of a mixture of like... Um, like I actually thought there was a natural gas leak at first. Really? I yeah. didn't get that from it, but I, I was smelling, I was, cause I've smelled that before. Maybe it's been hellebores. I don't know, <laughs> but I don't like, normally have hellebores inside, but yeah, no. Yeah. But it was not great when you're close. If, if you're about uh, five or six feet away from it, you can't smell it. No, but if you're having it on a that, dining table where you're eating food, yeah, like right next good. to it, not a great idea. So now it's looking pretty somewhere else, but um, and you know, I've noticed not all hellebores have that smell and there are some varieties that are strong, strong smelling. I can't remember the botanical name, but they, 
they um, they look different. They almost look thistle-like, hmm. like the leaves do. Uh, but they can stay inside. They don't love it for a, a long time, but if you buy them this time of year, because I know a lot of places are carrying them right now, they, they will be completely fine inside for a couple of months, and then you can plant them out in the spring. Jeff Barwick said, did you marry Aaron for his last name? It's pretty fabulous. It is fabulous. <laughs> that was a huge factor in my We're decision. not even sure if we're pronouncing it right. It's been pronounced so many different ways. Yeah, I've heard people say uh, Le Boutelier. Le Boutelier? Le Boutelier is potentially like the correct way. Uh -huh. um, Le Boutelier. When my parents moved here to Oregon, they just said Le Boutelier. Um, well, and I guess my grandparents have said Le Boutelier uh -huh. for a long time as well. So Who you knows? can pretty much say it however you want and mm -hmm. it works. It's regional. Yeah, it's regional. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Evan said you've said a couple of times you're a zone seven, but that's... That is comparable to North Alabama, my location. Are you sure they got the zones right for you? No. No. Well, based on this winter, yes. Yeah. But I guess based on a 10-year average. I also want to know how long it, uh, like for the zones, because it doesn't talk about how long uh, your region stays at that temperature. Sure. So like if you're zone seven, which is uh, the teens, Zero. if you stay at like in the teens for months mm -hmm. at a time, uh, that's not the same, I don't think, as Alabama, mm -hmm. where it doesn't. Right. Well, Does I that think make sense? He goes on to say you have much more snow freezing temps than typical zone seven that I'm used to because uh, we dip below into the 20s at coldest, but it's normally never below 40. Super strange. Yeah. Yeah, we just don't. Well, they just moved us to a zone six like two years ago mm -hmm. or something like that. And now we're a zone seven. But I won't plant like we're a zone seven. There's no way I would do that. I almost don't plant like we're in a zone six. Right. I don't trust it. I mean, this winter we might get away with it. Uh, but we do have way more cold temperatures coming our way right now. So you just never, you never know. I, I don't think know. There, there's a lot to do with how long you stay at those cooler temperatures. Yeah. Even though you're not breaking into, you know, past you're not getting the negatives for uh -huh. us. It's still, those plants just can't handle that. Mm -hmm. Those cold temperatures for that long. Right. Miss EAG said, yeah, yes, queen. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was the most uh, liked quote from, <laughs> well, for a while. Um, Aaron said that to me after something. I, I don't remember. Maybe we can insert the clip. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. Uh, by the way, what do they do with all the poinsettias after Christmas? I have no idea. They probably just pitch them. I bet they do. Like compost them or... You, I don't know. Like people that are squeamish about that, like if you go work at a growing facility... You'll get cured of that yeah. real fast. <laughs> yeah. Because you have to trash... Um, okay, so do you remember uh, Proven Winners one time, they were selling this plant that was like... Um, it was some petunia, like a super petunia yeah. or maybe a super bells. Mm -hmm. But um, somebody just like out of the woodwork said you know, I own this strain of whatever uh -huh. that previously like nobody had claimed or mm -hmm. I forget what the details were. So they were like, okay, well we're not legally allowed to sell this anymore. And they had to like trash like 5 million plants. Mm -hmm. Can't sell them. Right. And you can't give them away cause it's technically against, Ill the, law. against the law. And uh -huh. so they were just, you know, their hands were tied, but yeah, just trash 5 million plants. Can you imagine? No. That would be a tough one to swallow for sure. Yeah. yeah. And they lost all the money on it too. Because uh, you spent all the time growing it. Yeah. Uh, Barb's in the garden said, that's so odd how much Aaron doesn't like hellebores. They are gorgeous. What, it, what is it about them that he doesn't like? Couple things. One, I don't, I don't really care that much about the facing down. I can get over that. But I mean, that is kind of a, uh, a knock on them is that they, the flowers face down. But they just look like trash for most of the season. Like uh, 80% of the season, they look like trash. And then the rest of the season, like when nothing else is going on, they look mediocre. That's what I think. I do think, though, you can arrange them in a pleasing way, in an, in an arrangement, but not in the landscape. I like them in arrangements, in containers. Do not like them in the landscape. Blah. <laughs> So there you have it. That's what I have to live with, you guys. <laughs> MP77 USA said, okay, dang it, what's the alternative name? I haven't seen anything. So I picked up a, they have on the tag, it said wire vine, ribbons and curls. Looked nothing like the wire vines that I'm used to. So I looked it up. The alternative, one of the alternative names is the tapeworm plant. Ugh. And after I read that, I was like, oh man, <laughs> that's kind of what it looks like. Tapeworms are gross. They are gross. 
It's kind of a weird looking plant though, and kind of unusual and fun to have. It's doing well, we repotted it. Um, it's doing well so far. Uh, next question, oh, what fun. When you were at Edwards, what is the name of the plant that Aaron loved in the pot? I think that was a jade, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, I had on my captions and the computer girl kept saying cola cola. <laughs> I looked under the jade tree varieties, but no success. Cola Cola. Did I say Crassula? Crassula. Oh, maybe. Maybe. How old do you think that is? Like, well, I saw years somebody old? posted a picture of one that looks similar, and it said that it was 108 years old. There's yeah, was. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I mean, it could look like that for years at that stage. Sure. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know how long it takes. They for have them a couple to get of them big. too. Yeah. But yeah, that's um, that's a really cool. I mean, that's something you don't see every day because. Right. That's that's like a generational plant. Mm -hmm. uh, Dogwoods Farm said, what was the name of the first nursery? I loved all their displays and hope you go back there again so we can see how they change it up. That was Edwards Greenhouse in Boise. And that is the most unassuming place. Yeah. It looks, it's just like tucked in this residential area mm -hmm. and you go down this residential street and you're like, this can't be right. Mm -hmm. It's weird. It is kind of weird. How it, it's just like things were built up around it yeah. over the years. Uh, next video was decorating my parents' house for Christmas in the midst of a home renovation. So we did. We just decorated as best we could in my parents' house because they always have hosted Christmas dinner and my mom really didn't want to forfeit that. Uh, you know, I hosted Thanksgiving this year, which she normally does as well. She loves to host. It's her thing. She loves to have family there. That's the whole reason why they're doing this renovation is they wanted more space so that we were all comfortable when we all came over, which is really really neat a neat thing so we tried to make it happen they rented tables and chairs i brought fabric and dishes and uh my mom and my brother ended up cooking and my dad i don't know they were like a collaboration going on but they cooked everything on the grill we had beef wellington and it was beautiful yeah. i mean on the grill it was beautiful so um anyway it was a fun project monica my mom and i it worked tasted on it. really good too except i'm not a huge fan of mushrooms it had a mushroom uh like prosciutto kind of blend well no it was mushroom and garlic on yeah. the meat and then there was a prosciutto prosciutto or prosciutto whatever a wrap around it and then the uh dough oh, i thought it was so good i like mushrooms so so yeah. so i but the meat was like really it was nice perfection yeah. it was so good and the bread was good too yeah <laughs> the breading uh mobbin uh can't read your name sorry said does placing the evergreens cause sap to transfer onto the fabric if yes how would you cut it off the fabric um, didn't have any sap on the fabric. I think it, it would be more of a consideration if you were cutting like fresh cuts, not on the fur, but on the pine. The pine is the sappy one. So we didn't do any cutting. We just kind of flopped greens around and they were already dried off on the cut ends. So we didn't have anything to worry about. So I don't know how you would get it off velvet fabric or if you, if you even could. Um, I just would recommend doing all your cuts beforehand and letting them heal up before you use the greens. And Jazz and Jamie said, who's cooking Christmas dinner? A collaboration again, but mostly my mom and my dad. They kind of, yeah. I can't remember even all that we had. It seems like so long ago now. Well, Benjamin was sick and we were stressed out. Yeah. Because we had... everybody was like, you guys have to come. Yeah. And he was, and Benjamin like would have just We died full disclosure, he... everybody that was going to be there, like yeah. Benjamin's he coughing. He wanted to go so bad. Yeah. But we were we prepared couldn't... to, we prepared him too. Like yeah. we're going to stay home. We'll make it fun. Um, and everyone's like, nope, you're coming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And everybody's fine so far. Yeah. So we had a potato and leek gratin, M Monica made. And then my sister-in-law, Heather, my brother's wife, she brought this spinach dip that's so good mm -hmm. with um, like broken up French bread. And we had salad and we had, there was a big fruit platter and then we had ham too. It was definitely a different year with your mom not having a kitchen. Yeah. It was tough because you have to wash dishes in the kitchen or the bathroom sink yeah. and the bathtub. Some of them. I actually loaded up all the dishes I brought. I just loaded them up dirty and I did them all here at our house. I just put them all in the dishwasher. Kick White said, very beautifully accomplished. Where did you find that pretty black and gold tan rug? Funny thing. So that rug belonged to the people who used to own our house. Uh, Dennis and Mary, they moved to Mississippi and then they moved back to the Eagle area right around Boise. And they actually sold that rug to me and it didn't quite work for the spot that I wanted it. So my mom decided that she could use it either at the store or uh, at their house. So she had this random rug just handy. And it's a very pretty one too. Wanda Hunt said, Laura, where do you live in Oregon or in Boise, Idaho? We live on the Oregon, Idaho, is it the Oregon Boise border? Oregon, Idaho border. We live about 67, I think is the mile marker right outside our town, 67 miles away from Boise. Um, but you can drive 80 most of the way. Yeah, it's super fast drive. 
Heather said, what a wonderful progression and beautiful uh, transformation of the space. Question, when you first took us through, there were some things in the kitchen, cabinetry perhaps, that was being worked around. Was the plan for keeping that changed? Yes. So they are keeping the cabinets and everything, but they discovered in the process of, you know, getting the floors ready for new flooring, that the kitchen area was one inch higher than everything else in the on the first floor. So you have to take that up and get it fixed, which thank the Lord they had to do that. Like it was a blessing in disguise at first. It's so, so disappointing to have to feel like you're taking steps back, but they found a wiring issue underneath the oven that could have started a fire. Mm -hmm. I mean, since the moment it was put in, which was at my graduation, we were still under construction during my graduation party with blue tarps up everywhere. So that's when it happened that many years ago, all along the house could have burned down from this electrical issue and they got it fixed. So anyway, it did, you know, necess necessitate the removal of everything in there so they could fix it, but it's fixed. They're putting flooring down maybe even today as we hmm. speak. So they're coming right along. <laughs> Simply Bloom said that is romancing the ordinary at its finest question though. What did you use for napkins? Do you have nice cloth napkins? Yes. My mom had a set of nice cloth napkins that we used. They were white ones. Uh, Carla said, are your grandparents, your dad's or mom's parents? I've not heard if you've told in the past, they are my dad's parents, which I, they live what? Two miles, one mm -hmm. mile down the road mm -hmm. from us. Um, my mom's parents have both passed, uh, several years ago. Uh, so my dad's parents are still around and we actually went to their house for Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. They do a traditional, um, like dinner and gifts and things like that. So Laura said, question, do you do this with Aaron's family too? We do. So, well, kind of like, it's always different, but this year they started a new tradition. Our Christmas Eve was packed. So we did my grandparents Christmas tradition earlier on in the day. And then we always go to your uh, parents' church. So Christmas Eve candlelight service that evening. And then we all went over to his uh, family's house for gifts and we exchanged stockings this year. Yeah. Um, so they wanted to move our traditional, we usually get together once on Christmas Eve and once on Christmas day with both families. Um, and this year they moved it to where everybody could have Christmas morning at their own homes. And that was really fun too. Yeah. So we were able to do Christmas Eve with Aaron's family. We did our own little family unit Christmas morning. And then we went out to my family's house Christmas like evening. So it was very, it was very nice. Yeah, we weren't bouncing out. around it's, a lot. It's nice too that like both of our parents are really close. Yeah. So like bouncing around isn't difficult because my parents are literally a mile away as yeah. the crow flies. Right. And your parents are just, you know, five, 10 minutes down the road. Right. Uh, Suzanne said, how long have your parents been in that home? Since 1990. Mm -hmm. I was joking with them about, uh, I think like with any remodel, you start to, you get to the end of a remodel. You're like, this is costing so much more than we thought it was going to be. Mm -hmm. And I was like, how many more times is this remodel than what you paid for the whole house? And it's like, <laughs> and multiple, acreage. <laughs> yeah. It's like multiple times what they paid for the house mm -hmm. in the, in the nineties. Yeah. It's going to be nice though. It'll be fun. Okay. Next video was planting a hellebore centerpiece that we loved so much and taking a look at the pond. So I just took the hellebores, some of the Erica, the, um, hookra and put them in that trough that Aaron and I picked up on our shopping day, uh, put it inside. And we did take a look at a, the pond that day. I just wanted to show you kind of a winter update, how the plants were looking, how the water was looking because it's a complete learning experience for me. And I really have no idea what I'm doing. I mean, just bringing you guys along for what I'm looking at at the moment. So I will be doing that periodically with you guys. RM said, hi, Laura and Aaron question. Since you film videos, do you ever catch yourself talking to an audience when you're doing mundane tasks and not filming like out of the blue, you're moping and talk, uh, talking to your video audience. Nope. There's not a camera. It's, I don't know. I just don't think about it. It's just yeah. different. I don't do things differently. It's a lot faster without the cameras for sure. sure but that's about the only thing that's different about it. Uh, Ingrid said, I love the sprouting system at your sunny window. Where did you get this metal set? I got that from Gardner's Supply. They sent it out and I think they still have it. Somebody, because I mentioned that's where it was from. And um, I said that it came from Gardner's and I wasn't sure if they still had it. And there was a comment saying that, yes, they do. So oh. I haven't verified that, but it is nice. Madeline said, has your pond inspired your parents to carry aquatic plants or more of them or get a pond themselves? Uh, I think it's inspired them to possibly put in like a pondless waterfall down in their orchard, which I think would be awesome. I don't think it's inspired them to carry pond plants again. It's such a pain, such a pain when you're not really set up for it. Um, they would, if there was somebody in the area who was like an aquascape 
contractor. <clears throat> That's yeah. what we're missing in our area. Yeah. Is just an aquascape. Or I mean, we have Chris. Have but. We have Chris, who, but he's more Boise right. kind of area. Right. And, um, you know, he's super helpful to us, but I don't know how much he wants to come It needs this to be way. somebody that lives in Oregon. Yeah. Yep. Your parents used to have the pond at Andrews. Yeah. And, and it was they used beautiful. to carry more pond stuff. But your dad has said that over the years, when you don't have a good pond person in the area, yeah. like that just kind of dictates, like people just, they might want a pond, but there's nobody to hire to mm -hmm. get it done correctly. Right. And so people will try to DIY it themselves. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Greg told me that like 50% of the ponds they put in are actually refurbing. DIY, DIY mm -hmm. ponds that didn't work out because sure. you know it's there's a lot to it there's a lot of knowledge that pond people have that DIY people don't right and you can mess it up if you don't know what you're doing right well my grandpa for example he they used to have an in-ground swimming pool and over the years you know when the grandkids stopped using it as much and things it just became a little bit of a burden so he thought well I'm going to fill this in partially and we're going to do a pond uh, but he said multiple times he's like oh gosh I wish I had a setup like yours with all the filtration um, and all of that because I think his has been a little bit of a beast through the years it's real pretty but um, it's been a lot of work for him well even ours with the algae yeah, they said it would take two years, really? two years to like balance itself out um, and for us to learn what to do with the ion gen and yeah. all the other, you know, stuff. And it would help it if, if it was more shaded. Yeah. And it just, Which it will be. Eventually. It will be eventually. So they said it's kind of like a puppy. It's like getting a brand new puppy. It takes a while to train it. Sure. And once you get there, you're good to go. So they did prep us like I, I wasn't in the dark about what it would actually take. I love getting in it. I love my coverall or whatever they're called. I can see them right there. What are those called? Waiters. The waiters, the um, chest waiters. They're like insulated. They're padded on the knees. It's just, you're kind of buoyant in there. Mm -hmm. And so it's just, it's real comfy work. I didn't mind getting in at all. In fact, I was looking at it today when we were out there with the kids. I thought I could get in there again. <laughs> just do like a winter clean. Yeah, sure. You know? Maybe. Leslie Griffith said, so beautiful, but not surprised. Thank you. Everything you create is ama amazing. That's so sweet. Thank you. Um, one off topic question, or origin of the potting tables. Did you purchase them or make them? So in the greenhouse, the wood potting table that I was working on, that one is also from Gardner Supply that they sent out years ago now. Like a lot Didn't of years. Did we buy one locally though? I think I might've had one. Didn't we that get I one at like D and B? Oh, at Bymart. Bymart. When we lived at the town, in the townhouse. Yeah, when we first started making videos. Yeah, we needed a table. We didn't have anything like that at the garden center at the moment. And we went up and found a cedar. And it was so funny too, because like if you watch back to our original videos, like everything was based around that potting table. It was always you standing behind. Like, I don't know, in, in our minds, like that was how you make YouTube videos is you have a, a man with a camera and a you, presenter. Ha you have a presenter behind a table. Yeah. That's just what you do. And then yeah. now you still do it occasionally, but... Mm -hmm. You know, it's like nails on a chalkboard though, for me, watching the old videos or well, doing yes, it that way, that and, um, presenting in a very formal way. Sure. It's hard. I don't like doing that very much at all. Um, do, and then the other tables in the greenhouse, the wood ones with the hardware cloth top, you made the first two or yeah, three, two or three, maybe. Yeah. And then Paul's made a few, I think, did Eddie make a yeah, couple? Yeah, Eddie made a couple. Yeah. They're pretty basic. I think we did a video mm -hmm. putting one yeah, together. They're fairly basic, but so handy. Put wheels on them though. If you're going to make them, absolutely do not make them without the wheels on the bottom. Yeah. Pam said, love this. The plants all complement each other and the containers so nicely. You know, and I wish that I would have had more of those hookra. I thought those were so pretty with those hellebores. I thought that mix was just so gorgeous. Um, random question. Do you use notes or cue cards when making your videos or is this all info top of your mind as you film? I don't think I've ever had notes or cue cards. Notes. Yes. Cue mm. cards. Never. Um, notes when I'm doing videos, like with a big list of plants and I want to go over stats, it's usually the zone information that I can't remember exactly. Yeah. I mean, especially if I'm talking about 20 or 25 different plants, I could easily confuse like this one's a zone three through eight, or this one's a zone four through nine. I, you know, you know. so sometimes I will re uh, refer reference, reference my notes just to make sure I'm saying that right. But most of the things, you know, they're just, you we've, whenever we've done something like ed more educational in nature, um, I've always pushed you to try to do bullet points yeah, like so that outline. you can at least, yeah, an outline. So you can at least stay on track mm -hmm. and you're not, cause it's really easy when you're doing a video to go back and say the same thing yes. multiple times. Then you start forgetting what you said. Mm -hmm. And then you got to start if, all the way over. If you've got an outline, then you can be <laughs> mm -hmm. like, okay, well I've obviously already talked about that cause it was in my outline. Right. Do I like doing outlines? 
<laughs> no. <laughs> Susan said, do you have to turn a heater on for the fish? It's probably good. There is some algae still for the algae eater. So you uh, did good just the way you did it. Uh, we don't have to turn a heater on. The only thing we have to be mindful of is freezing. So mm -hmm. if the water froze completely over, we would have to, or if it was fixing to do that, we would need to sink a... It's like a stock tank yeah. water heater just to keep a little section of the ice open for oxygen. So we do have one. I don't, I don't know where it's at. Somewhere here in the barn. We have one in here. If we were no, started to notice some ice, we would probably pop it in there. No ice formations thus far, no. though. So uh, Elijah said, didn't this room used to be a secondary living room? Do you still use your dining room in the old side of the house? So we did a little shikashang of furniture, and the old dining room became our kind of TV room. And the TV room that we used, which was formerly the dining room, is now a dining room again, uh, so that we could fit our longer table. And it's worked out really nicely right there. N nicer than I thought it would, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We tried the table in the great room. It just isn't a good feel, especially a table on carpet for me. It's not big enough. Yeah. Our, our great room isn't big enough to, yeah. for a table. And... Mm -hmm. We have such an awkwardly shaped, it's nice because it's very large, yeah. our great room, Yeah. but it's very awkwardly it's shaped. It's like very wide. Yeah, it's really wide. And with all the windows, it's mm -hmm. hard to like place furniture and mm -hmm. with the fireplace because mm -hmm. it kind of, well, Dennis and Mary had it split up into two living rooms. But the, the split was right like down where the fireplace is. And so everything faced like it was, so the fireplace is here and they had everything facing like U shape that way, either mm -hmm. like south and north uh, but i kind of want everything pointed at the fireplace because yeah. i want to sit there and enjoy watching the fire but then you've got these two wings on the side that are really open one side has become a kid central area we have a table in there that they use for playing and we have a toy hutch over there because we just live downstairs and we don't want to have to go up and down a million times which does make it messy in there <sighs> it won't last forever it won't last forever and one day i will miss army men being on every single surface yeah. in our house Boy, that army man purchase was like the best. I know. I mean, he gets you all these brand new toys for Christmas and guess what he plays with? Army men. These little plastic army men and they're everywhere. Well, and it's more than just army men. There's um, little guys from Risk, the board game. Yeah. And then also Lord of the Rings Risk. Yeah. And so he's got all these little figurines and they're constantly doing battle. Yeah. Battles. This morning I asked him, hey, do you want to come outside and go on a walk with uh, Samantha and I? And he looked at me and he's like, I, I'm in the middle of a war. Yeah. I gotta get this war done first and then I can come join you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Next video is potting up house plants and a fresh flower arrangement in the Hartley. I found some beautiful English looking roses at the grocery store. Samantha Grace and I went and got some groceries. I had to get those while we were out because they were so beautiful. And then we came home, I made a, just a simple arrangement out of what I had picked up. And then we potted up some of the new house plants that Proven Winners had sent over. Plus I think I potted up a few that we, Aaron and I picked up that day we were out. So Linda said, uh, question though about the ficus trees. I always thought they have to have bright and direct light. How do you acclimate them in your Hartley? Well, at the moment, it's pretty just bright and direct light. We don't have too many sunny days or when the sun comes out, it's so brief that it's not like a, a bright, direct sun situation. I'm keeping an eye on everything though right now. If it was summertime, they would definitely have to go somewhere else. Um, we do have the shades pulled though like on both sides of the roof in the Hartley during the summer. So there is one side of the greenhouse that I could put them on where they'd be a little bit more protected, but I am watching them. So far, so good. Uh, Misty said, what kind of marker do you use to write on your plant labels? I use the garden marker. That's what it says. I don't know what brand it is. I get it at my parents' garden center. You can find them online. They're just like a Sharpie, except for they do last a little bit longer. They will fade though, um, especially if you live in a really wet area. I know here where you know, we're pretty dry. I can still read the tags at the end of the season for the most part. If we got a ton of rain, I don't know how they would hold. Crystal said, where can I pick up those iron planters? I did pick up some iron planters that are so beautiful down, down at my parents' garden center. I have no idea what brand they are or where they got them from. Um, they've got several different styles. Russell's in here checking it out. Hey bud, what are you doing? Yeah, you wanna talk about it? You coming up here? Yep. Anyway, I don't remember what I was talking about. The iron planters. You could call my parents' garden center <laughs> and they would be happy to help you with that. Uh, Colleen said, what was the brand of greenhouse your sister-in-law has and has she been happy with it? I have a small yard and I think the size would be perfect. That was a, help me out here, Aaron. It was a Paul Ram, right? Yep. And it was um, 
Canopia yeah. or Canopia or something. But yeah. that's like a like a their like genre a series. A series of And this was an octagon, an eight foot. Yeah, it was something octagon. octagonal. You know what? If you can go back to that video we linked it. It was from Gardner Supply. Yeah. And um, I think she's been really happy with it. She de- decorated it for Christmas and has really been enjoying it. I do think, I mean, those are, there's a lot of plastic parts to it. Yeah. So be prepared for that. Yeah. It was a beast to put together. Oh, I'm so glad Paul was there that day. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you and I would not have survived that project together. <laughs> been you fighting know, we by the would end. survive. We just can't survive filming and doing it. Yes, that's true. We could do it if we didn't have cameras out. Yeah. <sighs> Serena Baby said, those roses are so beautiful. I talked my husband into investing in David Austin roses. We have two bare roots shipping this spring and I'm thrilled. Have you grown David Austin from bare root before? I have. I'll be re- referencing your bare root videos from Heirloom Roses again. I just love your rose videos. Cheers from Western Colorado. So I just followed when I very first planted my first bare root rose, I followed David Austin's guide and they've got guides on their website that were really helpful to me. And I had great luck. And it was the first time that I had buried the crown, which oh, before that, like you don't bury the crown. That's what, you know, I had always thought. Yeah. And like most plants you don't. Yeah. And this one, this guide said that you bury it. I can't remember an inch or so down below. And that's exactly what I did with all the heirloom roses that I got um, this spring. And then I did some that I got at the garden center that weren't rooted into their containers yet. So they were essentially bare root. I did them all the same way and they just perform great and they don't rock. Like that's the thing. Mm -hmm. If you plant the crown up above the soil surface, they can rock in the wind and it can cause some issues. But anyway, I just follow David Austin's guide. So you should get on their website and check it out because it was very helpful. Uh, Chrissy said, great video again. Question, how often do you have to repot a house plant and how do you know when to do it? You know, some people will say like check once a year. That's not a bad idea. Check the root system once a year just to see what it looks like. Do we always check once a year? No. Most of the time we look for signs of stress. You know, if something is just not performing like it had before, um, if you notice some leaves yellowing or something, you know, just like gen- in general, like not as healthy of a plant, which and you don't want it to get to that point. But that's mm-hmm. usually for me when I start noticing like, oh, maybe I should repot that one. But sliding a plant out of its pot once a year to check the root system is the best way to go, I think. The next video was a very exciting way to start the new year. It went up on New Year's Eve and it was announcing the land purchase that we were just able to finalize and we were just able to finally tell you guys about. Uh, We've been working on it for a long, long time. Formally have been working on it since July. Yeah. So Aaron shook hands with our neighbor July when they were here installing the ponds. One of the first uh, survey, because you have to survey if you're going to move lot lines Mm -hmm. around. So uh, the first surveyor I called, he's like, man, I'd love to do it. Um, And I can, but I'm about six months out right now. And Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, man. So then another guy was around like two months. That was about three. I don't know. Two, three months out. Yeah. Yeah. But um, the county won't do anything until you have a surveyor that mm-hmm. fills out the application, the yeah. lot line, uh, m- what do you call that? Lot line application? Adjustment. Lot line adjustment application. Yeah. Well, and there you- was a lot of back and forth with our neighbor too, because we messed with the lines a lot, like, you know, figuring yeah. out what we were both happy with. So right. anyway, it just, it took forever, <laughs> uh, but we're really excited about it. Lot has already gone down. Um, in fact, before we officially signed, we had a willow tree taken out and we had a fence installed on the property. Um, so that's all done and ready to go. Now we can start really thinking about, you know, where lanes need to be access and all of that and where we need electrical and water. We won't do much else until all the infrastructure is in place. Um, it does have a barn on it, which I'm very excited about because I would love to get some animals one of these days. But again, I'm not going to get too ahead of myself. I want to make sure that the infrastructure's in, in place. There's a lot of electrical and water in place now, uh-huh. but it's not necessarily the way that we want things to uh-huh. be. So that, I think that's what you're meaning is that we have to decide how we want to use the space and sure. figure out. Well, we have to get it connected and everything. I yeah. mean, like it's not <coughs> run exactly where Like there's electrical it. that runs to the, the barn uh-huh. currently. And, um, but you know, he disabled the, cause he had a second meter mm-hmm. and he turned off the meter in his name yeah. as one does. Yes. Um, and he was like, Hey, here's the meter number. If you want to get it, you know, going in your name. So those are the kinds of things we just have to have electrician come out and yeah. And the um, water there's frost freeze out. and there's, um, 
faucets and things, but we just need to reconnect and yeah. and do all of that. I just want it just to be ready. You know, I don't want things to feel like a huge chore. It's already going to be a lot of work. I know uh, it's going to be a lot of work once we do get horses or something like that in there, but I want there to be water. I don't want to be hauling water. Yeah. You know, I don't want to be doing that kind of thing. I want there to be I'm access I'm so glad homes. you feel that way because that's how I feel. Yeah. Like, it's just not worth it. We've gone so many years without horses or animals yeah. or whatever. It's like... Um, we've got so much stuff to work on. Let's just get it done right yeah. the first way or the first time mm -hmm. and, you know, not mess around with like, well, if we just kind of, if we get a horse first and then we need fence, like proper fencing for where we want the pasture to exactly be. Yeah. I mean, all of that stuff needs to happen and we don't know where it's going to be yet. But anyway, let's read some of the questions. <laughs> Going Green Mom said, congrats. Did your neighbors move? What happened to the horses? That's a really nice barn to build. Uh, with a plan to leave. So our neighbors did move. They moved into Idaho um, and they took their horses with them. So right now the house, he wants us to buy the house, but yeah. oh no. no. <laughs> that's not going to happen. No, it's not going to happen. Unless he gives us like a 80% discount, yeah. maybe, yeah. you know, You're right. which I'm guessing isn't going to happen. Right. That's, that's okay. Um, well, at first he wanted, he didn't want to break off land. Uh, he wanted to sell it all together as one piece. And we just told him, well, we just can't do that. Well, that was the original thing mm -hmm. that we, I was working on for a while. I even talked to some bankers to figure out like, okay, Could how we can it? we uh -huh. do this to where we buy the whole property with the intention of just slicing off the, the land that we want and then reselling the house. Cause I thought, man, if we could finagle a way to, to buy everything and try to just do a quick process of, mm -hmm. but in this market, man, you know, you could be sitting on that house for years and we couldn't do that because large, big of a, large yeah. homes don't necessarily sell right away. Mm -hmm. So that would have been, that would have been dicey. So we just told him, I'm sorry, you know, Salvador, we can't do that. Um, and then he, you know, was like, Oh, that's fine. You know, and then ended up coming back to us and like, we we're not putting any pressure on him whatsoever. Cause we just, we don't make decisions like that. Right. We kind of like want things, the doors to open. We don't want to feel like we're pushing or pushing ourselves into anything that sure. we're not supposed to be doing. You know what I mean? So he came back to us late, like months later and said, you know what? I think let's do that. Let's break the land off. And then, you know, Oh, FedEx. Succulents. Ooh. Anyway, Olive said, I have a question for you. Would you want a basketball court if there wasn't one already? Yeah. I want something I, like that. I would. I would yeah. like a tennis court slash basketball court. Slash, I'm going to get some roller skates. The kids and I. I do think that that's probably an ideal location for where it is. Mm -hmm. As I was thinking that through in my mind, you even brought that up. You're mm -hmm. like, if it wasn't there, would you put one there? And I'm, you know, especially because we've planted all those trees that will get large. Mm -hmm. Um... You know, it's like, it's there. It costs so much more yeah. to take it out or put a new one in somewhere else that mm -hmm. I feel like let's leave it there. We can always resurface it if we need to in the future. Mm -hmm. um, I was looking up what, what type of materials they, they resurface and mm -hmm. that could be a possibility. So sure. I think so. Athena said, what do you think about PVC fencing versus treated or wood fencing, such as cost, longevity, reusability, maintenance, etc." What do you think? Well, we did price out wood fencing because I really like my parents' fence. And then there's also a, a ramp. I think my parents modeled their fence. It's a, I don't know if there's three or four rail black, like black stained wood fence. Your parents might have five. No. It's really? at least four. I think it might be five. Four. Anyway, there's a uh, horse breeding facility not far from us that has fences like that all around the property. And they're gorgeous. It's like a classic black, you know, Kentucky yeah. fence. Yeah. So pretty. So expensive. Oh my goodness. It's expensive. Yeah. It's expensive to install. So here, here's my thoughts on it. It that, I like that the most. Yeah. I think a black wood fence is the nicest, but um, you have to continue to stain it or paint mm -hmm. it or whatever to keep it. The boards black. warp. You know, you have to repair it, it. In our area, black fences will warp. They'll soak in the sun, and so you know, it's it's a lot of. They're not going to last forever. And the installation's way more. Plus, we already had a bunch of white fencing here. Yeah. So, so. For, for us, the vinyl, the white vinyl works so well because we get so blooming hot mm -hmm. that it can take the sun yeah. and it won't crack or warp or It doesn't anything. even get hot. It lasts forever. Mm -hmm. Like, unless you break it by like hitting it or running into it or something. It, it happens kinda, occasionally. Yeah. <laughs> Not that but often. Other, and it's, it's, um, very repairable. Mm -hmm. The white vinyl, you know, yeah. if you, if you break a rail, you can just go buy another one. And it doesn't stick, stick it out like a sore thumb. If you put a brand new board up and stain it, it's going to look real yeah. fresh compared to all the rest of right. them. 
I don't know. It's not my first choice no. in terms of looks, but it is my first choice in terms of longevity and lack of maintenance. And cost. Necessary maintenance. And cost is cheap. Yeah. So that, there you go. Aurora Borealis said, so happy for you. We want, we too want to expand our land. How did you approach your neighbors to start the, that conversation? Do you remember? You just say, hey, hey, would you ever consider, maybe start with a no pressure <laughs> yeah. or something. Yeah. But like, uh, or, or maybe you could, don't even pose it as a question. Just say like, hey, we've talked about it. And I think that we would be interested if you are ever interested in carving off part of your land or, or selling or whatever, just, you know, before you do anything, just if you wouldn't mind keeping us in mind. Mm -hmm. And um, cause I think that's something that we'd be interested down the road. If, if it ever is something that you want to do. I think that's do. how we acquired everything. Yeah. <laughs> it was just with a conversation. Yeah. You know, um, I had to, I did the dirt lands. Um, I want to say I did three offers, like three actual offers mm -hmm. and finally got to the Found amount. the price that was worth where, it. Yeah, everybody yeah. has a price. And mm -hmm. it wasn't astronomical. It wasn't no. crazy, you know, but I finally got to that threshold where mm -hmm. he was like, okay, let's do it. Mm -hmm. you know? And it's okay if your neighbor says no. And they're all nice people and we get along with all of them really well. So that, that's helpful too. There's... I can't, I'm trying to think if somebody... I mean, it'd be, it'd be weird if somebody came to us, like kind of knowing the situation, I guess, asking if they could buy some of our land. That'd be odd. Well, I think it depends too. Like we would never go offer for somebody who's like clearly using their land. You know, they have whatever, you know what I mean? Right. Um, I'm just trying to think of, uh, in a situation where someone could take offense to sure. an offer. Sure. I think it's how you, it's in how you approach it for sure. Um, I don't know. It seems like it's always been amicable and I think too, they know what we're going to do with it and we're not going to build on it and it's going to be trees and plants and yeah. you know, things like that. And I think that that makes them happy. Deborah said, since you now have more land instead of remodeling your house, have you thought about building new on your land? I don't think that's possible given the, um, the zoning mm -hmm. for our land. It's zoned like, um, urban growth, urban growth, mm -hmm. which means that I think that the city wants to see the maximum number of homes, uh, on this property. That's why we wanted the property. Yeah. Right. Because you like know? if some, if some developer was like, I want to put apartments, the city would be like, yes, what can we do? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, like if you wanted to put a three-story apartment complex, they'd be all about it. And in our area, land is plentiful. So like yeah. understand that. I it's know it's an I agricultural saw, area. I've seen some comments through the years when we've acquired new properties about how like the gre greed for, you know, the land and acquiring all the land, but there's so much land for sale that's in urban growth development that's n that nobody's developing right now. So it doesn't it's not like a guilt complex thing on our end. Our for city sure. is hardly growing. Yeah. I mean, it grows at a snail's pace mm -hmm. and we've talked about this before, but you could literally find land like any, <laughs> anywhere, anywhere around our city mm -hmm. to expand. So like if you wanted to develop, I mean, there's land within our city mm -hmm. that is just vacant mm -hmm. that you could, you could develop. Your grandpa still has like he, if somebody developer, he's got still an acre mm -hmm. inside the city. More than that. I think, uh, I think it's like three lots that he has. Uh -huh. And if somebody came to him with an offer, he'd sell in a heartbeat, but there aren't developers because there's people aren't moving to our town right. over the border though. Different story. Yeah. Idaho is yeah. growing very quickly. Yeah. So, uh, Severin said, could you make the basketball court area, uh, the ice skating rink you always wanted? I saw somebody else commented about that, about maybe building up the sides a bit yeah. and you could flood it and have well, ice Well, you'd have to freeze it though somehow. So I, I don't know. know how that works. Like some type of a... Well, you'd need to have winters where like you could just... I don't think we'll ever get that. You've got to freeze it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, if you asked me that, like even five, six, seven years ago, I'd say like easy. You just pour some, you know, put your hose out there for a while and you'll have an ice skating rink. But now yeah. it's like, you know, yeah. I, we have the door open of the studio right. right now and I'm not in a coat. When I was pulling the kids around today, I had to take my coat off because the sun was so warm. Right. So anyway, uh, next video was cleaning up the new barn and adding potted blue spruce trees. I was so excited. That was the project I was most excited about all fall and beginning of winter, just getting into that barn. I had walked through it a few times, but you know, and they would have probably been totally fine with me doing that, but it doesn't feel right until it's actually yours. So I was just waiting for that day where I could get out there with a gator and just do some cleaning. I just wanted to get my hands on it a little bit. Uh, went down to the garden center and picked up those two blue spruces, which we will use in the border somewhere after they're done in those pots. It was just a really fun project. And it was also a very warm day and it was a just beautiful. Loved it. He was great with us, letting us 
kind oh, of yeah. do whatever. Well, but they've been like moved out for yeah, a while. It so. does feel weird though when it's like you know it hasn't been recorded yeah. with the county. Well, in fact, Aaron has been wanting me to put plan down on paper, and I just told him I can't. I like. It has Mentally. to be reality. I have to have signed on it before I can even let my brain think about it. So like putting a fence in and doing that kind of thing before we'd even closed felt a little weird. Uh, but now that it's all official, we can kind of move forward at this po point. Lynn said horse manure is extremely val valued by many as a top dressing for rose beds and likely other flowering plants. Horses are beautiful. What a win. What will you use your horses for? For pleasure, <laughs> riding, petting, brushing. <laughs> You know, I think it'll be good for the kids. Looking at. Looking at. And my mom, you guys, she worked at a stable when she was in high school or just out of high school um, for quite a long time. And she, her job was to exercise the horses and she did a lot of the maintenance and that sort of thing. She's always loved them. My dad grew up with horses and does not like them at all. So they've never like found a compromise in yeah. that realm. So she's very excited. She'll be over here and she'll be able to ride and pet. And she said she just wanted horses to pet in her pasture. So they'll get lots of attention here. DH said, you should get some barn cats, friends for your house cats. Oh, if our cats would allow it. Yeah. Russell and Ch Cheddar especially, so territorial. So Russell we actually adopted from the Idaho Humane Society. Cheddar and Douglas have both just showed up on their own. Cheddar showed up and stayed. He's more aloof and he sleeps a lot and he's he actually has a spot up in our loft that he, he goes into and we have to uh, make sure he's out before you know, I swear when, cause Paul buttons up the barn uh -huh. when he leaves, uh, and I, he's in here so many nights. Oh, he's probably, is. I think he wants it. I yeah, think he likes he to might. just spend the night here. Yeah. And then Douglas showed up. I don't know if you guys remember the Instagram picture where I was walking through our house, like carrying something. And I looked through one of the windows and there's Douglas sitting on the chaise lounge in the front sun porch. Do you remember that? Yeah. I was like, who are you? Yeah. You're sitting on my chaise and you are a contrasting color. It's going to be so messy with air. Um, and he stayed around for a little while and then he left for like a year yeah. and then he came back and now he's just here all the time. So whether or not he belongs to somebody, I don't know. It looks like he eats here and he eats somewhere else as well. <laughs> but he gets like flea tick treatment along with our other cats. I just do him right along with the other ones. So he gets everything the same. Anyway, all that said, Russell and Cheddar don't like Douglas at all, at all. Uh, so if we got any more cats, I see, a uh, at least along the perimeter, I see tons of cats really? uh, come in and out, out of the property. Mm -hmm. They don't seem to get that close to the house. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of cats around. There was a fox last night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tart Christine said, I grew up in the country and having the responsibility of raising animals teaches you a lot. Are horses the only animals you want or would you consider lambs or goats? You know, I think it'd be fun with lambs and goats. I just don't know what I would do with them. Mm-hmm. You know? Take them to the fair? Uh, if the kids want to, they can yeah. do that. TLH Happy Voice said, maybe you guys can tell us what's going on with YouTube. The commercials are longer and longer now. It's awful. Used to be like one or two 15 seconds and maybe one 30 seconds. Now you have to watch over a minute, maybe even three minutes of commercials before you even see any of the actual video. You know, that's really interesting. Um, well, okay, one, if you use a lot of YouTube, I would recommend getting YouTube Premium. Mm -hmm. I think it's like $9.99 and... It, you know, it's just no ads on YouTube. I have it and like, it's just a different experience, just not mm -hmm. having any ads. I get that if that's not in your budget. Um, but yeah, so YouTube made a change recently where for like, um, for ads, they said they were sending out these emails saying we're gonna streamline the thing for creators and blah, blah, blah. And I didn't really like pay a lot of attention to it, but they took away some of the features that we had or some of the buttons that I could click mm -hmm. and now it's just very simple it's just like ads or no ads kind of mm. and so you just click ads because that's how we get I mean it's how we make our money uh -huh. um so we can't turn the ads off mm -hmm. or we'd have to start stop making videos yeah unless somebody wants to be like like the olden days benefactor <laughs> <laughs> Private benefactor. Yeah. <laughs> I walk in the rain said, I agree with Bethany. Get those horses in there. Have you researched what kind or breed you are wanting? There's nothing more peaceful looking than a pasture with a little red barn. Hint, hint, red barn. Uh, first, I don't really, I don't think I'm going to mind what kind or breed of horse. I just want to make sure it's for like, it's a bomb proof horse. That it's a kid friendly, beginner friendly horse. Um, that maybe a little bit of an older horse. I kind of want to get a couple. Um, to start, but I just want to make sure that they're uh, 
just good solid horses for especially the kids to be around. It's like getting an old dog. Yeah, for us to learn on, you know, and just like give some older horses a really good life for a while, you know, mm -hmm. and let let us get our, you know, learning in at a, a slower pace maybe. So I don't think I'm going to be super particular. I mean, there are there are a lot of beautiful ones out there. I know on Mackinac they had a lot of Frisians. And when I saw Frisians, I was like, oh. Bethany said they're like the poodles of the horse world. <laughs> I'm like, well, they're beautiful. Um, so she found me a couple of Frisians, both of which are, I think, located ones in the Netherlands, the others in like New Jersey. I think we'll get local horses. Um, local Frisians? Well, I want to get local horses that are used to our environment yeah. and all of that. So anyway, I don't think I'm going to be particularly particular in this case but uh and then there was a lot of support for painting the barn white but there was also a lot of support for keeping the barn red mm. and you're kind of like team level the barn yeah i am a totally one. team level the barn i don't know how I'm you not. feel about it but... well you know i sent you some pictures of barns that i like um Here, here's my like here's my thing yeah i don't like the way it's positioned on the property i don't think it's ideal for having horses or having fences around to where they can go in and out of the barn and things like that. So because of that, I don't, I don't like, I don't like the look of it personally. It's just not my style. It's, it it's can be other country and kind of charming. Yeah. It can like be other it. people's style. It's just not mine. There's lots of horse barns that I'm like, Oh, that's nice. And they don't have to be extravagant either. I, there's a lot of small ones that I think are really pretty. Um, so I think that we should position a barn on the dirt lands or on, you know, next to the dirt lands where we bought the land and just figure out how to position it to where we can have fences to where the horses can have access to going in and out. Because um, it sounds like you need to make sure that they have access in and out to where they mm -hmm. can get in for shelter when they need it, but also yeah. go outside and graze mm -hmm. when they want. And that's going to make for a happier horse. And I don't want to be up at like 6 a.m. or something. Letting like horses Letting out. them out yeah. of the barn. Mm -hmm. So I just, I'm, I'm assuming that's a thing that you can let them have access. But we, I... I I know you're not going to do the research, so I feel like I need to talk to somebody that I trust that uh, can be like, hey, here's how you should position a barn on a property. Mm -hmm. Here's the different like areas. Because if you look at aerial views of horse properties, there's all these little areas that are all fenced in. I don't understand what they're all for and why you use them mm -hmm. and, and how you'd put them in order and what gates to go from what to what. So mm -hmm. there's a that's lot. That's how Bra Aaron's brain works and mine doesn't. I'm like, it's expensive to put fences in, in there, yeah. and I don't want to spend the money doing it wrong. No, like I, if you're yeah. going to pay somebody to put a fence in, it's like, let's get this done. Right. Right. Makes sense. Yeah. It and, does. and I'm happy to wait a couple years too, mm -hmm. to make sure it gets done right. I, I don't want to jump into it. Sure. Uh, Trisha said, is this new property that you did the waterfall and planters for? Did they move or just sell your part of the land? I'm so happy for you guys. Um, it is the people that we did the waterfall for. In fact, it's like right off of where the barn is. Um, if you look just to the east of it, you can see the top of where the pond is. And then the land goes down um, into their yard where they've got a swimming pool and stuff like that down in there. But they did move. Um, so I'm not sure what they're going to do with it. Even after um, breaking off the four acres that mm -hmm. we bought, they still have a number of acres but attached like to seven? their... No, it's like three. Oh, why did I think seven? Because uh, it was it was seven. No. Now it's three. Oh, well, that makes sense. Because we got four. Okay, yeah. that, that makes a lot of math. <laughs> and, you know, if, if he does decide to sell the house, I think three acres is like a really mm -hmm. reasonable amount of land to yeah. go with a house that size. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can see a lot of people not wanting seven just because yeah. it's just more to take care yeah. of. And if you're if you're wanting a larger house with just some landscaping around mm -hmm. and grass and stuff like that. Three, I think it's plenty, pretty manageable. I think, yeah. Um, Laura, you must be smelling the horses. Yes. Do you think you could drop the background by six inches? It's affixed to the bottom and we wonder if you could safely attach it to the top instead. Just dropping the backboard. I... So uh, just in reference to that, the basketball hoops are six and a half inches higher than standard. They're right. at 10, 6.5 instead of just 10 feet. I'm going to, I'm going to check and see if there's a way that I can. Yeah. I want them to be adjustable. I was thinking more about it and mm -hmm. they need to be adjustable for our kids. Cause right now our kids are almost six and three mm -hmm. and there's going to be years and years and years where they're going to want to play on like a six foot, eight foot hoop, you mm -hmm. know, to practice. Could you get like a little one put to the side though? I'd rather they were just adjustable. Really? Yeah. Cause like I played on adjustable hoops when I was little mm -hmm. and that was awesome. Mm-hmm. And you could make it 10 if you wanted to. You sure. could make it 6 if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. We had awesome dunk contests. Are those the types that don't have a solid base, though? Like they could fall over in a windstorm? No, you can, you can make them solid. Can you? 
that would work then. Yeah. So I just need to figure that out. Um, so we'll probably end up needing different backboards, yeah. like different hoops, but we might be able to use the same pole structure mm -hmm. and just attach new adjustable hoops on the back. Right. So yeah. Uh, last video. I think this is the most amount of videos we've ever done in a recap. Like seven, like seven videos. Yeah. yeah. Winter seed sowing, uh, the least expensive way to grow seeds. Every year I say I'm not going to do it again. And every year I always, this time of year, just want a way to start seeds. Uh, and it's, it really is something that bears repeating every year because I think it's good to let, especially beginner gardeners know that there's a way to do seed starting for certain types of seeds where you don't need equipment. You don't need space inside your house. I mean, you basically need the, stuff you're gonna recycle anyway from your kitchen, you know, um, plus a little soil and seeds and you're good to go. And I think that's really awesome that there's an option like that. Uh, Asylum Lane said, is this only possible in the winter? Would the bottles get too hot in spring and summer? Yes, they get very hot inside. Uh, Jody said, how do you decide when it's the right time to start the winter to winter sow seeds? Any time in the winter. I could have started ours in like the beginning of December. You just want to make sure that you're not starting them so early that it might warm up again and make the seed, like trigger the seeds to want to germinate. Once it's like good solid winter, you can stick them out there and just make sure that whenever you do that, that you have to have them a little bit on your radar to keep them wet. In most climates where you're getting snow and rain, they're getting plenty of moisture and you don't have to add supplemental. In our area, we have lots of, well, less wind than we used to, but we usually have a little bit more wind and less rainfall, less snowfall, so I have to add supplemental water. Do you poke drain holes? Four. In the, oh, okay. Yeah. I use like a gallon sized water jug because we use, um, uh, jugs of water to fill certain things in our house, in our houses, in our house. Um, so it's perfect. How many houses do you have? Just with the one. <laughs> um, so we have the, you know, the jugs that are like square on the bottom and you can just pop four holes in there and it works out really well. And then I've seen some other people who will winter sow later on in the spring, like in April, they'll start some with tomatoes and peppers. And if they're not, you know, in there for too long, it works really, really well if they don't get too, too cold. So anyway, yeah, there's a lot of information out there about it. So if it's something that interests you, you can find SCADs videos, uh, people doing different methods, different types of containers, different, you know, climates doing this sort of thing. There's a lot of info. Uh, Captain said, will you also be showing how you handle them when the time comes to plant them out? That's always the goal. That's always the goal. I think I've been a little bit better about updates. Don't you think, Erin, we've been like overall a little bit better about updates for the most part? This last year we did a lot better. Yeah. Sometimes it's a little hard when you get super, super busy in the spring, but that's something that's, I, I put them in a spot where I actually see them every day instead of tucking them away where you can't see them. So I'm hopeful that nothing falls between the cracks. Garden Retriever said, I have some peony starts from Costco that I never planted. Has anyone tried this method with peony tubers? I did. Um, I bought some at a garden show and I planted them out along the back fence line. I think in a video I planted them, two of them came up. One of them did not. And it said it was supposed to, they were supposed to take a couple of years to bloom. The first year I did get just leaves. Second year I did get a couple of blooms, which was really fun. And they're still there. Uh, they'll be probably moved at this point yeah. now that we're going to retool that area back there. But yeah, I mean, I just followed the instructions that were on the, the bag that I bought them on and they did fine. Two out of three of them did fine. <laughs> anyway, Rosemary Time said, I understood the method and how it's similar to nature's reseeding method, but how difficult is it to separate the seedlings when it's time to transplant plant them after the last frost date in the spring? Don't the roots all grow together? You know, they're surprisingly resilient to taking them apart. I think sometimes it almost spurs the plant to grow on a little bit better. Um, if you seed a little bit less, I think on some of mine, I seeded them pretty heavy. Um, if you seed a little less, which I've done through the years, it is a lot easier. Like I actually kind of mentally break my little gallon size jug into nine sections and just put nine seeds in there or I've done five seeds you know four and then one in the center so I could easily tear them apart depends on how many containers you want to have out there but that definitely makes it easier last question is from Amber what do you do with all the soil when you've replanted them out uh, seems like a lot of money to keep buying potting mix it took me a bag maybe a bag and just a part of a bag to do 17 containers, which will start so, so many plants. By the time we plant them out, those roots will probably utilize a lot of that soil, so we won't have a lot left over. Uh, with soil that we do have left over, we just spread it out in the garden somewhere. So nothing is wasted. And I feel like that's an, an extremely uh, efficient way to start seeds, and I don't think it's wasteful of soil at all. Can you My make opinion. your own seed starting? What's that? Do you th um if you mixed up your own seed starting mix, uh -huh. by the time you got all the in ingredients, do you think it would be close to the same price? Oh, I don't know. I've never really. 
That would be interesting. It would be interesting to figure that out. Because you've got to you've got to buy perlite, and you've got to buy like maybe peat moss. If it, you know, a lot of people want peat free soil. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, that is it for today's recap video. Thank you so much for all of the questions. Um, this video is probably like, oh, I don't even know. Thanks for sticking with us for this long. If you made it to the end, uh, we will see you in the next video. Bye.